Hello, my cryptoverse, verse, 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 verse. Welcome to your source for everything crypto. Uh, this video has been long overdue, but it's going to be covering Callisto and the upcoming Ethereum Classic airdrop that's going to be happening in a couple of hours. Just a few things that I want to cover and talk about. Do a deep dive and look at Callisto at the white paper. See what we're getting ourselves into, what kind of price action we can expect, and really what it does in whole. So stay tuned and we'll get right to it. Before you came round. All right, so let's just jump right into it. First things first, um, if you don't know what this is, this is an airdrop for Ethereum Classic that is happening in relatively a couple hours, I would say. Uh, it's not too not too far off from now. We're looking at around 1,235 more blocks. Uh, it's happening at 5.5 million. So um, this is going to happen relatively soon. Um, full disclosure, I did take my tokens uh, my ethereum plastic out of binance and put it into another wallet uh, that way i have access to the private keys and that sort of thing uh, the reason why is because i was unsure where binance stood as far as the airdrop itself they did not say or come out with an actual public statement that they were going to back it um, I've sent them emails i messaged them on twitter and i never got a response um, there are some things going around that are showing on like reddit that they are going to be honoring it, but um, they haven't come out to say it officially, so uh, I didn't want to take any chances. Uh, that being said, uh, from my experience with Binance, they've always sort of honored it. You may not be able to use it right away, and they may just give you a limited amount of time to withdraw it, especially if the coin's not going to be on Binance. Since the coin isn't necessarily going to be on Binance yet, my guess is that they'll probably give you some amount of time to take it off uh, and then maybe that coin has to go through the process of being accepted on Binance. Uh, Bitrix did come out and say for sure that they aren't. They are not supporting it. So hopefully if you guys have it on Bitrix that you'd seen this. This happened a couple of days ago. Uh, and, and they announced that they were not going to be following it um, simply because they did not contact them uh, in enough time for them to do their vetting process uh, of the coin itself and whether or not they wanted it accepted on the Bitrix platform and Bit Bitrix exchange. Um, some other things that I was looking at as far as this is that people said to watch out for Cryptopia and that sort of thing. So hopefully uh, if you're watching this, you guys have access to your coins. If it's on Binance, I wouldn't be too worried. But anywhere else, uh, I'm unsure as far as exchanges. I know that there are some out there that are definitely honoring it. Um, so you should be okay with your Callisto. Um, that being said, uh, I am unsure exactly what um, Callisto is going to come out at. I just wanted to do a quick review on the coin itself. Uh, Ethereum Classic, as you know, is sitting around $29. Uh, this is actually surprising to me because I thought the coin itself uh, was going to go up. Um, maybe even double where it's at right now before this airdrop. And then I expected, obviously, a fallback from that. Um, I'm not sure where the coin's going to go after this airdrop happens. Uh, it could drop, you know, another 30% or so. Um, it doesn't really concern me too much because I believe in, Ethereum, uh, believe in Ethereum Classic. I believe in the team, the development team. I think there's a really good uh, community around it and backing it. And I think they've got some interesting projects, and I think they're moving forward really well. So even if it dro does drop, um, I expect it fully to go even past where it's at right now. I think that its valuation at the end of 2018 will definitely be higher. So if I'm holding it for a while, it's not going to bother me. Now, as you can see um, from here, that uh, basically get a good idea of what the market cap is because that's really like how you want to evaluate coins and what they're worth, uh, what you can expect them to come out with uh, as far as price goes. Because Callisto, I've heard some rumors, some people think that it's going to be you know, pennies, some people think. I've seen 
crazy prices of hundred dollars or three hundred dollars for a Callisto, uh, and I definitely uh, do not. I'm not in that boat. I don't think that's possible. Uh, one of the reasons why is because of the actual circulating supply or the initial supply uh, that they're going to be releasing. Uh, I believe is six point five billion coins, not million billion. Um, I'm pretty sure they say that in the white paper. Yeah, okay. So 6.5 billion coins. So if you look at this, as far as market cap goes, if it comes out even at a dollar, which a dollar would be decent for the coin itself, uh, it's going to put it in the top 10. It's going to be somewhere uh, between Stellar and EOS. So um, I think if that might be optimistic, my guess is that you should expect probably a lower price. Um, I'm not... I'm not saying that it deserves to be a lower price, but uh, my guess is that it will. Um, one thing that uh, some of the things that I wanted to go over real quick uh, about the coin itself, because whenever I initially covered this airdrop, uh, they didn't have the white paper out. And it hadn't gone through this process, so um, I didn't really have a chance to actually dive into it until recently. Um, so I just wanted to cover a couple of things, ask you guys some questions, how you feel about it. Um, and definitely leave me some comments about this because I'm unsure exactly where I stand about it. Uh, I feel like there's a lot of, um, there's a centralness uh, to it, uh, at least in the beginning. Uh, obviously, when it gets later on and it releases some later protocols and later forks, uh, I don't feel like maybe it gives some of the power back to the community itself. But at the beginning, uh, it's kind of sketchy. So uh, I just wanted to cover that and see where you guys stand on it, see how you guys feel about it, and uh, uh, let me know. Um, so definitely leave some comments, hit that like button, uh, and so we can get this going around the community and see how other people feel about it as well. Um, so as you see, the total, the, the maximum supply is going to be 6.5 billion coins and you can see that the block reward here goes out 30 percent of it goes into the treasury fee uh, so what that is is basically the treasury fee is where you're going to have your cold staking stuff and um, also for the auditing the team the development team and then that also is going to be starting to get paid out into uh, the developers the lead developers the people that founded this coin and as if, i'll show you guys how much they're going to make and you might be it's kind of astonishing how much they're actually taking for themselves. So um, anyways, this is just a little bit about the cold staking protocol. One of the things that we're excited about with Callisto is the fact that they are going to have cold staking and it still has the um, HT hash for mining. So you can have your mining purposes, then you can cold stake it. What it basically is saying here, uh, and this is coming out of that treasury pool that we were just talking about, 30%. Is that if you have the coins and you lock them up into the treasury uh, for one month, then you're going to be receiving some of the benefits. The some of that 10% uh, or 20% uh, is what it ends up later being a uh, pool. So you will get a part of that pool uh, for your coins. Now you can take those out anytime after a month, um, as long as you waited the month, then you'll get the reward. So once you take them out, then you won't be cold staking anymore. That that's how it works. So that's the part that uh, a lot of us like is the cold staking aspect of it. Uh, and then once you're a cold staking in some of the later protocols, uh, you also get a voice on how, um, what the project does, what the development team does, what you want to back with some of the funds. Um, there's a really nice project out there that, uh, you know, you feel like this team should, should use its resources for, and then you can vote for it or you can vote against it. And obviously they'll do, uh, as similar to a democracy, uh, allow the funds to be initiated for that particular project. So that's sort of what this all is talking about here. Now, okay, this middle section is actually talking about the different stages of the ICO, or ICO, of the coin itself, okay? Um, one thing that you should take note is that at the very beginning, um, not everything's going to be in place. And this is the, this kind of weird... Uh, aspect of it because they're releasing the coin today uh, march 5th and uh some of the protocols aren't in place so uh, they talked about their moonlight is not it's not capable of doing what they want it to yet and they're working on the next iteration of it um here they're talking about how um they're going to be taking the full amount out the 30 percent out uh ahead of time instead of with uh through the mining part of it 
Um, this is so that they can pay the development team and they can they can look for a full-time auditing team. So this is the central aspect of it, the centralization that people are worried about is that they're going to be hiring their own auditing team from within and, and they're going to be paying them full-time with the uh, Callisto CLO. Um, so they don't necessarily have one in, in place yet, so people are sort of worried about it. Um, auditing, I think, is going to be uh, is useful. Uh, obviously, that's one of the, the main, I guess, aspirations of this coin and this project is so that they can uh, audit coins and limit the, you know, Discre the discrepancies in, in ICOs and other things of that nature in projects where people are losing millions of dollars because they didn't do it correctly, uh, the smart contracts weren't deployed correctly, or you know they didn't audit it before they released it, and uh, there's a lot of missing funds and you know questions there. So uh, I think that it's a necessary thing, and one of the cool aspects of CLO is that they're going to do it for free for projects. Um, but, I mean, free to the project itself. They're not going to charge uh, a new team. Um, but they're going to obviously pay them with CLO from their own team. So it's going to be a fully employed auditing system, uh, similar to maybe like Quantstamp would, would do with uh, other coins. But then they're keeping it with themselves. Um, but that's not in place yet. But they're going to be taking the percentage out of the first cut. Um, and on top of that, you'll see that the uh, this is how much money they're going to be paying themselves. This is the founders and the developers. Um, this is 500,000 coins, a half a million coins, and this is per month. This is their payment per month, not right off the rip, not right off the bat. Every month they're going to be getting paid this much CLO. So that is a little concerning as well. That's a lot of money to be paying yourself. Uh, I'm not sure exactly why they feel that way. Uh, and if this coin gets to a dollar, they're getting paid a half a million dollars every month. So uh, that's one thing that people are, are probably looking at and saying, what in the heck? You know, uh, I certainly am. Um, they do have, obviously, they're keeping this open as far as so you can see it transparently, um, which is good, I guess. But in the same aspect, you're still wondering, like, why do you have to pay yourself that much? Um, so that being said, uh, in this first stage, which is happening today, uh, the cold staking is is technically not available. Like you're not going to actually get your paid every month. That's not not ready yet. Um, that's in, one of the things they were talking about is it's not ready. So obviously that's also a little concerning, and I also believe that may hurt um, may hurt the project uh, a little bit. But they do say that uh, later on um, that if you do cold stake during this period that you'll end up getting paid later on whenever they do the second stage, which happens on November 11th. So here is where the actual cold staking is supposed to take place. Uh, this is when it's going to be implemented so that when you put it in for a month, you can get paid after the month. Um, for, if you do it from March through till November, um, you're not going to get any reward for it until later on, um, which is they said they'll be able to pay everybody afterwards. Um, so that's sort of where the rest of the fee is going. And obviously they say right here what the fee is again, it's not 30%. So they take 30% after each fork. Um, and the last one is the one that they uh, are going to give governance to the cold stakers. So if you are cold staking, that's going to give you some governing power, some voting power. So those are some good things. There's definitely good things in it. And there's some definitely some questionable like what the heck is going on things here. Um, obviously, I, I, like I mentioned, I'm disappointed that the cold staking and stuff like that isn't going to be working right up the fr right up front. Um, those are some of the big points that everybody was really looking forward to and excited about. Um, but as a miner, obviously, if you're mining the that algorithm, um, you're still good to go. And I think that a lot of people might try and turn to that uh, in hopes that they can get a lot of coins for the cold staking aspect of it um event down the line so i think that the price when it comes out uh it's definitely not going to be a hundred or three hundred dollars and some of those if you hear those wild rumors uh don't believe them uh, that's definitely not going to be the cost of the coin um i think optimistically you can look at a dollar for the coin uh, my guess is that it's going to be lower than that uh, i would even venture to say somewhere in the 20 cent range uh 20 to 30 cent range that's just my guess that's my opinion uh, obviously, I'm not a financial advisor, and I'm not really—I don't really have 
any like you know mathematical equation that that's what the price is i'm just looking at the the supply of it uh and where that are, where it would put it and i'm also looking at the fact that uh they're taking so much out and then paying themselves as well i think people are going to sort of be turned off from that uh and plus the coin is probably going to get dumped right away uh they might go up right real fast you know and then it'll probably get dumped and then uh you're probably going to have a lot of like sideways action for it um and then obviously the fact that the cold staking isn't ready is going to hurt the price as well. So I just wanted to bring this stuff up to you guys. I've, I've been wanting to get this video out for a long time and I had some issues. Uh, I had one actually completely finished, but I there's something up with the sound. So uh, I wanted to make this video before the fork happened. I know that's relatively soon, but let's, let me know what you guys think. What's your opinion on this project? What is your opinion on the fact that, of the central centralized aspect with the auditing uh, and how much the developers are paying themselves and taking out for the blocks. Um, and and what is your idea? What, what do you guys think that the price is going to come out with? Um, any ideas? That's I gave you my opinion. I'm, I'm down to hear what you guys think. So uh, hit us a like, give us a subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I'll see you guys uh, later today.